Well, I'm delighted to welcome uh, an old friend of the programme back to the studio. Katie Neves has been nominated for a National Diversity Award in the LGBT category. And we followed uh, Katie's uh, story, really, for a couple of years or so now, haven't we, Katie? When's the last, you, you haven't been in for a while, though, have you? No, well, well actually, I, I have been in. I, I was in, actually, a few weeks ago just to review the newspapers oh, on a Sunday. Count. I snuck that in under the barrier. No, <laughs> unless you've been on this show, it doesn't really oh, count. Oh, right, fair enough. <laughs> just recap for, as if you would, on, on your backstory for so those people who've never heard uh, you interviewed before, just tell us your backstory and then we'll uh, catch up with where okay. you are. Uh, well, I've been a photographer and filmmaker for 33 years, but two years ago I came out very publicly as being transgender after living for 48 years as a man. Mm. Um, and so um, I came out very publicly and very openly because my photography business was and still is named after my old male name, which was Martin. Mm. It was Martin Needs Photography and Film. I felt, and it had been an established brand for 22 years when I did it and got some great reviews and everything, and I just felt I didn't want to change that name. So I made a coming out video, whacked it on all social media, sent it out to all my clients, hadn't got a clue what the reaction would be. Um, I was so worried about it because my whole reputation, my livelihood and everything rested on it. Um, but to my surprise and to my delight, uh, I was just inundated with hundreds of messages of support. It was it was lovely. It's heartwarming, wasn't it? It, it? was amazing. Mm. I felt so loved. And it went from something that was um, I was dreading coming out to being one of the most uplifting experiences of my life. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. And then that led on to to, 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 to doing media stuff such as this. Mm. You know? So it's a, in fact, this was, this was where it started, actually, yeah. here at Leicester, you know, BBC Radio Leicester. Um, and then and then did some other stuff and, and sort of started off locally and then then ended up doing national stuff as well so national radio and television and, and newspapers and magazines and um, all of a sudden I'd become this trans ambassador and mm. then that's led me to 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 form cool to be trans um, to what well, for two things really one to to reach out to other trans people just to let them know that it's okay to be trans because it really is um, and a lot of trans people don't know that and they give themselves a hard time mm. unnecessarily. Um, and then the other thing is to educate the general public about it. And I think if you can do it with a smile and a bit of humour, you bring them along on the journey. You, know, you don't have to be placard waving and in their faces because it turns them off. Mm. Uh, but if you're if you you know if you're happy and you just show that you're happy, um, and it's just a way of demonstrating that trans people are just ordinary people who want to be happy just like everyone else yeah. and that's it and, you know, that so is, where are you now in, in that story because you know Martin uh, couldn't obviously become Katie overnight um, no. it takes a period of time for a number of reasons so where are you at now mm. right um, well basically I, um, I, I started on um, HRT and hormone blockers uh, it was about 22 months ago but that's only because I paid privately because with the NHS the NHS trans healthcare is absolutely broken. It really is. I'm still on the waiting list. I was referred to over two years ago by my GP, and I'm still I still haven't had a first appointment, despite the fact that the NHS guidelines say it should be a maximum of 18 weeks. Well, it's been over two years, and there's still no sign of it. So I just felt that I couldn't wait that long, and so I was in the fortunate enough position to to be able to pay privately. So that's so I was able to start my transition. So so that's all that's all going along nicely from from that point of view. Um I changed my name to Katie mm -hmm. in July 2018 and then I started living full time as as female from the 2nd of September 2018. Um so we're talking about you know, a year you know just over a year you know a year and a few months. Um and it's amazing. It just feels so right. Yeah. Uh, I've lost count of the number of people who've told me that I just look so much happier now. I was gonna, I was um, literally just going to yeah. say that very thing. You know, yeah. I mean, I think it's been a learning curve, hasn't it? The whole experience. Mm, absolutely. But you, every time you yeah. come in, you seem to be much more relaxed than happier. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it feels amazing to be able to live my truth. It really does. And mm. yeah, I mean, there's been it's been a bumpy ride in terms of. You know, some personal stuff or whatever as well. But but overall, in myself, I feel amazing. I've, and it feels so right. And um, so I just want to be able to share that with me. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I mean, I didn't choose to be trans. No one chooses to be trans. It's just something you are and you either deal with it or you struggle with it. And um, I was, I felt strong enough to be able to deal with it. And I'm glad that I tackled it head on as I have because people seem to have responded well to it. Um, and because now I'm, I'm sort of going and doing trans awareness training at companies and then doing public speaking and stuff, and and, and it, um, and it really helps. And, and there's like there's, there's, a, there's a company that's, that that's, that I'm talking with at the moment where they've got a trans employee who's come out to the HR department, um, but they haven't come out to the rest of the, their colleagues at the moment. And so 
I'm going to be working closely with them in the coming out process and helping, well, a, a, giving some mentor, you know, mentorship and some help to the trans employee, yeah. but then also helping the um, the other um, colleagues because they're in transition as well with yeah. them. They're on a journey with them because, yeah. and a lot of them can't, you know, can't handle it to begin with. And so I, I go in there and sort of, and, and help them with it and just to show them that it's okay. You know, this is this is what's happening. You know, it's, yeah. it's I think a lot of um, bigotry. Um, and prejudice comes from a fear of the unknown. Um, so if you can just take that unknown away and just show that it's okay, really. Yeah. <laughs> then Have you seen a change though in attitudes, and not just uh, by you know big companies, but also mm. by individuals? Generally speaking, over the past couple of years. Um, no, I think to be honest, I think we. Yeah. I think we were sort of getting there anyway, because there's been quite a lot of stuff in the media yeah. and a lot of documentaries and yeah. things anyway. So I think. It's easier now to come out as trans than it's ever been. Still not easy. Yeah, <laughs> Still really, not, really hard. Not. And the hardest thing is to admit it to yourself. That's the hardest thing. What can we do, though, to make it easier for people, to, to make people feel more comfortable about coming out? I, I think, I think um, certainly to have more, more trans awareness you know, events and, and, and training. So certainly training is definitely the key to it. education, definitely. Have more of that. Um, and then just to show your support, you know, if someone comes out to you as being trans, just show your support to them, continue to show your support and just and just say, well, yeah, well, you're the same person. You've just got, you've got a different identity, you look different, got a different name, but you're still the same person inside. You've still got the same skills, the same um, sense of integrity, the same sense of humour, however warped that may be <laughs> in my case. Um, yeah, it's still the same person, yeah. but you're just happier. And I think if you can just acknowledge that, um, that goes an awful long way. So how do you feel about this nomination then for a National Diversity Award? Well, I'm quite humbled to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's just it's be. I mean, I don't. I mean, I haven't won anything yet. It's just a nomination yeah. at the moment. But it's it's lovely to be to be nominated. And there's some stiff competition for it as well. And it's, it's for the um, it's as a role model, you know, in the LGBT yeah. plus category. And I mean, well, it, I mean, if I got shortlisted, that would be amazing because the the, the other people that, that I'm up against, they're amazing as well. well that's so. good in itself. The shortlist is so strong. It's good, isn't it? Because, you know, it can't be that long ago. There wouldn't mm. have been many people that could no, be nominated. No, that's right. So, so, um, so that, yeah, they haven't got as far as shortlisting yet. Mm. But uh, but just to be nominated is, is, is lovely. And, it, and and also the other good thing about it is that I, I can sort of log in and, and, and into their website and I can see the comments that the, the, the people who have voted for me have, have been making and there's been some really lovely things they've been saying and, and um, yeah it is quite humbling to be honest yeah um, at a time as well where um, people need all sorts of support um, in all sorts of areas and mental health is a real consideration for people more so than ever before now isn't it it's been left behind by the way we deal with physical mm. illness you know mental health has, has not been the top priority thankfully it's becoming more of a priority now isn't it it, it is it is and and and, and rightfully so mm. and and a lot of trans people do end up with mental issues although um being trans is is not a mental illness and mm. not a mental condition at all um it, it's strange that it used to be classed by, by the World Health Organization. It used to be classed as a, as, as a mental condition, um, but then so did so did being gay. Mm. Which, when you think about it, you think for goodness' sake. Yeah. But they've only just caught up with the times. It was only mm. last year when they actually declassified it. So it is not a, a mental condition or an illness at all. But a lot of trans people, because of the pressure that society puts on them um they you know they 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 really feel that pressure and 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 of course it plays havoc with them and so a lot of mm. a lot of them do do suffer terribly with that and and because the suicide rates are astronomical for for trans people and um, the stonewall um the stonewall did a, a trans mental health survey back in 2012 that was mm. the last one that was done and it showed that 48 percent of trans people have attempted suicide and 84% have thought about it. Mm. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones I haven't, but I'm surprised that those stats aren't higher because the majority of my trans friends have attempted it. Um, and I've had some real horror stories with this. So um, I think if I can do whatever I can just to take a little bit of pressure off for them, give them a little bit of help mm. and... and um, you know, just show them that it really is okay. But you're already doing that, aren't you? Um, it's well, interesting. Michael Cashman was in Leicester recently, mm. um, and you know, we spoke about developments that have been made. And he was saying, you know, there is still so much more to do. Mm. And people like you are doing that, you know, uh, at the coalface, as it were, talking to the people um, that really need support. And you must have met some 
incredibly strong people and you mm. know, the support you give is invaluable, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, I've met some incredible people. My whole world has opened up since doing this. It's incredible. Mm. I, mean, I, I mean, I had a, a wide circle of friends and business associates anyway, but it, it is, it's just, you know, probably tripled in size now. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, and so I was, yeah, sort of going off doing this is just, just, Amazing, it really is. And the photography is still going strong. Absolutely, yeah. You brought still... a camera in today, so <laughs> no, I... we're being we're being videoed we are. Um, for, for your for your um, website and so on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that is still going strong. Absolutely, I still do that, and I'm still trading under the name of Martin. I don't News know how you find time to do it though. That's the thing. Nor do I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sleep much. <laughs> I'm I'm terrible. I'm always working into the late into the night. It's terrible. I should get out of this habit. It's not good. <laughs> well, listen. We wish you all the very best with the nomination. Yeah, thank uh, you. We'll follow that with interest and hopefully fingers crossed uh, you'll pick up the award and we'll have you back in the studio to have a chat but you're on I'd the breakfast to... show tomorrow morning as well so I am yeah we'll, the we'll premium... look forward to that with yeah. Jimmy and Samaya I know I should be having my own my own programme get your own <laughs> studio get your... <laughs> Katie thank you for coming in Thanks always for great to me. see you thank you yeah thank you Bye.